Thank you. Take your seats, please. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Wingman Day and Commander's Call. This is not the commander you thought you were going to see, is it, huh? It is my distinct pleasure and honor to be able to introduce and for us to have with us today General McDo, who wanted to say a few words to AMC's Showcase Wing. The way I prefer to be introduced is as the former 375th commander. <laughs> <laughs> This is always going to be a place that holds a special place in my heart. Uh, for the first 20 years of my career, I'd never actually been to Scott. For the last 12, I can't seem to leave. <laughs> and we love every time we come back here because we get to renew old acquaintances. And one of them is with this wing. Uh, I was the one that convinced the four star many hundred years ago that the four star ought to visit this wing. He says, but Darren, I live here. I go, you bet. But I've got great, great airmen who live here every day doing things for you that they owe, you owe them a good thank you. And so now I'm that guy. <laughs> so I'm never going to be someone that forgets to tell you thank you very much for what you do. What you do is special. And it is appreciated. Although no one tells you. Most days you get to hear people's gripes and complaints. Most days you get to hear where you fall short. Every organization has an opportunity to fall short. You get many more opportunities than most. Help from above is more than just something on your patch. <laughs> it's something you live every single day. Let me tell you, you do more things right. And in my mind, you do all things right. This is a phenomenal organization with strong leadership and I appreciate you. I've got a list in my pocket, in one of my pockets, which pocket I don't know, <laughs> of just a few things I wanted to make sure I mentioned. On the 5th of May, alone, you did more than many wings do all year. Just, to, just in case you've forgotten, on the 5th of May, I pinned on a fourth star. And then we had a change of command from AMC to uh, and Transcom, and you just happened to have hosted the Chief of Staff of the Air Force, the Secretary of Defense, and about a thousand of our closest friends, and news media and all kinds of things. And it was phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And people didn't get a chance to see all of the hard work it went in to make it look so phenomenal. But believe it or not, 150 years ago I was you, and I can vaguely remember what hard work it takes to put on an event like that. And that was just the one show day and all the days that went prior to that. And then not too long after that, we had to take care of the mess that I made by leaving 18th Air Force early by doing an assumption command, command for General Everhart. Bless you. <laughs> no small feat in itself. And then I got a chance to sneak into your formation at a retreat ceremony not too long ago on 9-11. And uh, I felt really good just to stand amongst the formation. So thank you for that. And then this week, you'll only take on the most important event that'll happen in my entire life. You'll host the Mobility Senior Statesman. And for those of you that don't know who they are, they're all my mentors. Um, and they have been molding me for about 20 some odd years now. And they may have an opinion or two about how the state of their command is. And their view of that command will be you. To Generals Fogelman, Ryan, Light, McNabb, Robertson, you are going to be Air Mobility Command during their visit. Not just Scott, you are AMC. And I am proud to know that you'll represent them well. And I want to interrupt this just long enough to say, Two words, and I'm out of here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
All right. That is an honor. That is a privilege. That is a great leader. That is former 375th Air Mobility Wing Commander. And you talk about, we talk about, and still talk about how we are AMC Showcase Wing. You know who came up with that? General McDo. He's the one that, that coined that phrase, AMC Showcase Wing. And, you, and you, we have been since then, and you remain that today. And just like he said, I'm in, I am continually impressed with what you do and unbelievably proud to be serving with you and to seeing the results of all your hard work, uh, of what you've done. General McDo touched on that. When you think about what we do and what our mission is, and our mission is to what? Enable, Enable rapid global mobility. No, 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 no. One more time. We do what? We... Enable rapid global mobility. Right, right. We enable rapid global mobility. That's something we're very proud of. We do it very, very well. You do it very, very well. That's what General McDoo is talking about. You represent AMC. We are AMC here. You know, the, the, the scope and the effect of what we do is far beyond the, the fence line here at Scott Air Force Base. It's around the world. It's the global. We put the global and global reach, global power, global mobility. That's what we do here, and you do it exceptionally well. We just had a chance to host last week yet another group of civic leaders, this time some very prominent and uh, important ones. If everybody's you know, prominent and important in their own uh, areas. These are some former CEOs of corporations like Intel Corporation, uh, some, a lot of private charities, private organizations. They came in last week for 18th Air Force's uh, civic outreach program, which was in conjunction, kind of timed along the lines with uh, General, Major General Falkenberry's retirement. And a lot of the folks here and uh, in the previous session were involved in helping to put that program on. And they, just like every other civic group and every other organization that comes in here, is in incredibly impressed with what you do. Un you know, they're just surprised at the magnitude of the impact that you have about how young airmen, civilians, our senior NCOs, our officers, how everybody works together, how we partner with everybody on this base and the impact that we have in our national defense. They are incredibly impressed by that. But what really strikes me is a lot of the comments that I got from multiple people in those sessions was how proud they were, not just of you, and they were very, very proud of you, but they makes them proud to be an American. You know, it, it, you just really instill that in them when they got to see some of the demonstrations that we put on, the briefings, talk about the impacts, meet the airmen out there. It is very impressive. They're very proud of you. Uh, and that's why when you're out at lunch in this community, you'll hear them randomly come up to you and say thank you for your service and all. That's, that's the effect that you have on folks. So sometimes, like General McDoo, you don't get a lot of the thanks. You don't get that feedback. You know, we as the senior leaders here in the front row, we have some more of that interaction with them and they kind of funnel that through us and we need to do a better job making sure that you hear that, uh, how much you are greatly appreciated and what a great job you do. We have uh, the, the impacts we talk about worldwide, the heroes, the heroic efforts that we put in. We have a lot of heroes in our midst uh, here at Scott Air Force Base. We recognize some of them. It was a theme of our Air Force birthday ball, the, uh, the gala style event that we put on this year at the club, which was phenomenal. It was, the theme was today's heroes, tomorrow's legacy. And you know names like Pitzenbarger and Levito and Rickenbacker and Mitchell and all of our, uh, those who went before us, the heroes of before inspired us that are our legacy in the Air Force. Well, we have those same people, same caliber folks in the audience today, in the audience this morning, those who, because we have so many folks that are gonna have to watch this on the video, uh, unfortunately, we will videotape this for those who couldn't fit in here. Uh, but that we have them here today. But we honored them, and that was the theme of this year's Air Force Gala. And what I want to do is I want to go back and I want to start off by saying thanks to those who helped put this on, those who came out. It was a fabulous event. And I want to recognize Captain uh, Jennifer Wang. Come on up here. We recognized Mass Sergeant Dyson this morning. Captain Jennifer Wang hopped in as the POC. We went through, this is a year-long event in the making, and we've had some turnover and with people getting new assignments or going TDY, she jumped in and took the reins and really carried this ball across the finish line, led the team to the spectacular event that it was to have fun, to build that camaraderie and honor our legacy, our history. 
uh, our heroes of today who are going to be our legacy of tomorrow. And I want to say thank you to Captain Wang for her great job and her leadership in that effort. Cheers, thank you. Like I said, we recognized Matt Sergeant Dyson before, and she was kind of the threat. She was the one of the thread that throughout the whole time, she was the steady one that was on that team throughout the whole time. There were many others. There were many, many others that went into that event. A lot of volunteers, a lot of others who have been stepped in the seat in leadership roles, various committees. We thank you, too. Um, it takes an entire team to put this together, and uh, it, it did not go unnoticed, all the hard work, so thank you for helping to do that. And in regards to the... Uh, you know, it takes a team and projects. You saw on the way in, we had the table for the combined federal campaign. There's another one of those major events that happens annually. Those of you who are not, you know, if you came in an FTAC, this is probably your first one you've seen that. If you're not, if you're not first term airman here, then you've seen one of these before. We do the Air Force Association, or the uh, Air Force Aid Society uh, fundraiser or the, the drive, uh, at the, at the other big one during the year. Now we're in the fall season and we're in the combined federal campaign. And this is an incredibly uh, special drive because it allows you the opportunity to give, to give back charities of your choice, ranging from those that support you know, world hunger, medical research, uh, pet rescue, uh, supporting children in need, you name it. Uh, there's, there's a whole, the, the packet of the book is this thick with all the different charities. And you all know what I'm talking about. You've seen it before. So, this annual campaign just kicked off again, so I'm going to turn it over to Captain Solberg, who will give us a quick overview of uh, the, the drive for this year. Good morning. So he gave a great overview and a really great introduction, so thank you for that, sir. Um, I just wanted to touch base with you and let you know that this is open for everyone. While we cannot solicit contractors, if there are any, we will gladly take your money. So if, you, <laughs> if you'd like to make a donation, please see us out there at the table. Um, so the, it's really important that you know that the campaign now it is in effect now, and it runs until the 18th of November. And so after that, obviously, you can donate, but, it, you know, they'll, they'll be glad to take your money, but we won't get credit for that. So why? So the theme this year is we make it possible. And so there are over, as he mentioned, there are over 20,000 national charities. There's 3,000 local charities. There are numerous international charities that you can go and find online. So it's really, truly, whatever kind of organization you're wanting to donate your money to, they will be happy to take that. Donations are as little as $2 per month for those of us that are doing the uh, military, the payroll deduction. So that's a cup of coffee. I mean, you know, it's no, no minimal amount of money uh, um, is, is too minimal. So, and then, so again, it's cash, check, charge. The charge is a one-time charge online. We can also do that military, the MyPay. So we, each uh, group has its own designation code, so make sure that you get that from your representatives. We've raised over $14,000 just in that first week, so the most accurate or the most up-to-date numbers as of this morning for MyPay alone was $19,125. So we're about a quarter of the way there, and that's not counting the paper donations. So thank you very much for those of you who have already donated. Thank you for those of you who are considering donating. And then if, obviously, if you need more information, you can certainly see us at the table in the back. 100% um, contact by November 1st. So if you haven't already been contacted, I will be happy to take care of that for you. Again, I'm outside at that table. If you're not sure who your group coordinator is, the lists are up here. Do I have any group coordinator? I know there's at least one in here. If you're a group coordinator, please stand. Some of them might have gotten kicked out, but thank you guys for your leadership and your help, okay? Um, any questions for me? All right, we'll see you guys out there, and don't forget your flu shots. I know we got a lot of medics in the house. That's, a, that's another medic there leading another, another great uh, drive here. The, uh, CFC is, again, like I said, it's a, it's a great uh, organization or a great uh, campaign to give back, uh, to say thank you for those who also support us out there and in your communities, and that way you can get involved. Uh, another thing that, you know, the medics, you know, CFC stands for a lot of things. It also stands for, you know, some confusing for the counter flu campaign, which, oh, by the way, is also going on in the, in the lobby out here. Uh, so you can get your flu shots on the way out if you haven't done that already. I know that we're running the, the flu clinic as well. One thing that I'll piggyback off of this subject is 
you know, we talked about the Air Force ball and the Galilee and that, the CFC, I mentioned the Air Force aid, and there are others. There's a lot of other big events that go on through the years where we ask for POCs and folks to get involved. This, these are great opportunities. We appreciate the volunteerism. We need people to step up and be those leaders to take on this, these extra projects to, make, to give back to the community, to ourselves, to make things special for the base. But it's also a great leadership opportunity for you to get some exposure working on a special project. The skills translate, believe it or not, into stuff in your own duties as well. So this is a great opportunity for particularly younger airmen or young officers to get in, step up, get involved in some of these kind of things. And you know, in your duty section, you may be one of the worker bees. This is an opportunity to take on a leadership role. In, in that regard. So take a look at when these things come around, yeah, whether it's in your unit for the booster clubs or whether it's for the squadron, the group, or a wing event kind of this or base event. Uh, I just encourage you to take advantage of those. A lot of, uh, it, it does take a little bit of extra time, but it's a great reward on the backside. And particularly when we're doing things like this, CFC, it's a very rewarding campaign uh, as well. So thank you very much for that. Okay, now, we also have a lot of medics in the house here, and they will tell you, and so we're continuing a little bit of a medical theme, but we got a little different spin on it. Uh, I've told you before, you've heard General McDew talk about it, uh, and hopefully you're hearing it in your workplace, how proud we are of you and, and uh, how great we're performing here. There are, in any organization, we also have our challenges every once in a while, the folks that kind of stay, stray off the path a little bit. And, uh, you know, whether that's, you know, misconduct or, uh, misuse of government travel cards, you know, all the different th things that are out there. One of the things that we talk about in, in is uh, the drug abuse, right? We're talking about uh, in Wingman Day, certainly. We've talked about resilience. We've talked about all these different areas. Taking care of the theme of Wingman Day, obviously, is take care of each other. One of the areas that we need to do a better job of helping to take care of you is giving you some more information. Because it's easy when you think about drug abuse and you think about cocaine, you think about meth, you think about all these other, the illegal drugs. Everybody knows it's wrong, but prescription drugs has become an issue. And it's very confusing because what if it's a drug that's prescribed to you? And, it's, and so you have something, you had back surgery or something has gone on and am I allowed to take that? How long am I allowed to take that? Can I use it again? Uh, so we need to do a better job of clarifying some of the policy on that because what we're finding across the Air Force is that people are starting to get in trouble for misuse of prescription drugs. So with that, I asked our legal and um, the pharmacy team to come up and give us a little rundown on prescription drug abuse and to clarify some of the stuff so that we can help each other to make smart decisions going forth and so we don't get into some of this trouble. Thank you, sir. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Rob Hume. I'm the staff judge advocate here at the wing, and some of you have already put this together. If the JAG is talking to you about drugs, uh, you can and should take that as fair warning. I uh, want to share with you some information, uh, hopefully that is news you can use. Take care of each other. Share this information. Get it out there, because just like Colonel Kramer said, every time you provide a sample, everybody in this room has probably provided a sample, uh, and it's not surprising to know that they're looking for uh, the illicit, the illegal drugs, but every single time you provide a sample, they're also looking for prescription meds, okay? When you pop positive for prescription meds, that triggers a flag in the system. Every single time they look at that. And the very next step is for a medical review officer to look at your record and see if that is a valid prescription that is in the system for you, taken for the specific purpose for which it was provided, in the specific quantity that it was provided. So if I've been provided meds for, say, shoulder surgery, and then six months later I twist my ankle and decide to self-medicate with that same medicine, even if I'm pretty sure that's what the doc would prescribe anyway, I'm in the wrong. That is unlawful use, okay? A um, couple things that you can do uh, when you see an off-base provider, make sure you circle back and you're talking to your doctor and making sure that that prescription med is in the system. You don't want that red flag to go off and then find yourself having to explain. Uh, what I've often said is, why put yourself in the position where you're having to tell it to the judge or tell it to members or tell it to the convening authority when all you had to do was tell it to your doc, okay? Um, along with that, um, Contract intended uh, medical purpose. Um, along with that is also uh, the question of time. OK, 
okay? So if uh, the prescription says take as needed for a particular condition and you're not sure, Doc Rainey's gonna tell us a little bit about this in just a second, but if you're not sure, web med, get in there, talk with your doctor and make sure that that is still a valid prescription for you for that particular intended purposes. Um, if you find yourself uh, popping positive and you don't have a valid prescription for it, uh, administrative actions, non-judicial punishment, discharge, and court-martial uh, can be the results that you face. Automatic discharge processing for improper drug use. So uh, hopefully that is news that you can use, news that you can share with others. And why do we care? W what is the bottom line? The bottom line is good order discipline, readiness, and ability to carry out our mission to enable rapid global mobility, okay? Doc Rennie's gonna tell you uh, some tips uh, on the medical side to help keep you, uh, keep you straight. Thank you, Colonel Hume. I am uh, Wes Rennie, Lieutenant Colonel. I have the pleasure of leading the fantastic pharmacy team here at Scott Air Force Base. <laughs> there really is, we started looking at this one, but there really is no hard and fast law that says when you must as a patient give up your drug. Most of the laws revolve around when we may write and prescribe and dispense. So basically a good rule of thumb is about 90 days. That's the longest amount of time my staff here at the base is going to issue a medication for. And so after that, you, you probably need to get rid of it because there's, there's several things that can happen with drugs. They, they degrade. They're not going to be as useful. Some drugs actually over time, we have a very humid environment here, change and become, can cause a health issue for you. Uh, also, it's a, you know, in addition to being a health risk to you, to others, you don't want that stuff around the house. We hear all, in the news all the time about tragedies that happen to kids. Teenagers are getting into these things, taking them to parties. It's not a good idea. Um, like the JAG mentioned, but I re-injured myself and I have some left over. You need current stuff in your med profile. If you just go to the provider and get a new prescription, you're covered. There was an incident when I was at Langley Air Force Base several years ago when a member did something like this and took a medication, and they actually ended up getting a, a non-line of duty thing. So you want to make sure that you're smart about using your drugs. We have great medical services here. Come see the doc, get a current prescription, and you're covered. And only use medications that are prescribed to you. Don't take your wife's stuff. Don't take your buddy's stuff because it needs to be in your profile to cover you legally, and if there's something that goes wrong, there's line of duty implications, and if you have an adverse reaction, we need that in your medication profile. So how should you dispose of this stuff? One system we've implemented here at Scott is the takeaway bags. I have some down here. If somebody wants to grab some, they're at both pharmacies, and we're looking at getting these at other locations on the base. This is for non-controlled drugs. So, or if you, you can't get one of those, you can mix them with coffee grounds at home, put them in a separate container. But make sure before you throw any prescription bottles away, take the time to black out your information. You don't want somebody stealing your identity or getting your medical information. Uh, control drugs. There's basically two ways to get rid of these right now. Uh, you can turn them in at the O'Fallon Police Department or the St. Clair Sheriff's Department. Um, there's some confusion about can you flush medications. A lot of medications, when they go through your body systems, come out in our sewer system naturally because a lot of them aren't metabolized and still end up in our sewer system. So because of the danger with these agents, and I'm talking about the Percocets, the ADHD meds, those types of things. It's better for you to go ahead and flush those and get rid of the bottles so they aren't available to be misused or potentially injure a child or something. I'll be available after the call today if anybody has any questions. Like I said, I've got some takeaway bags down here or stop by and see one of my fantastic pharmacy members. They will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you. All right, so I thought was, this is a really important one I want to get out there because we have a lot of times some very well-intentioned people going through the right thought processes of going, hey, what's well, my medication? It was prescribed to me. How long? This answers a lot of those questions. We're going to answer some of these questions because we don't want people getting in trouble who are otherwise, you know, there's no malintent. There's no intended abuse. But if it pops, if you go and have to go pee in a bottle, you know, it'll show up on there, and that can cause you, and then you have to answer the mail. So the bottom line is just talk to your provider. And I know I'm talking to a house of medics in here right now because a lot, a lot of the folks in here are from over med group, and you know that. But I'm just trying to make sure we get that education piece out there so everybody knows if you've got a question, just ask. Uh, we want to get you the care uh, that you need. And uh, so just follow through the proper procedures. All right. So with that, the next topic or next uh, presenter that I want to bring up, and unfortunately, he always feels like I tee him up with the bad news or following on the bad stuff. 
uh, is Chief Matthias. Chief Matthias is, you know, here, here's my wingman right here. You know, so when we talk about Wingman Day, who do, you know, I've got a couple wingmen. I've got Colonel Green right up front. I certainly have my bride, Deb, uh, who's down here as well. But Chief is, is, uh, is my wingman, always looking out for me. And I want to make sure, and he's always looking out for you, too, and, and uh, advocating on your behalf and making sure we're doing all what's right for you. And I want to make sure I give him an opportunity to uh, cover a few topics with you. So, Chief, over to you. Thanks, Or. You know, whenever I take the stage, I'm always uh, guided by the five B's of public speaking. And those are, be brief, brother, be brief. <laughs> Today will be no different. But I want to talk to you about a serious topic, suicides. Uh, to date, we've had 72 suicides in the Air Force. Last year at this time, we had 72. And in 2012, we had 83. So we're doing a little bit better than 2012, but probably still not as good as we should be doing. Here in the wing, we're doing really great. But to, you know, to give it a little, you know, take it into concept, if you take away 72 seats in this room, it'll be a weak team. That's what suicide does to the Air Force. It makes us weak, if you will. Now, I don't know if we can stop every single suicide, but it is our duty to try. And it starts by being good wingmen, right? Getting to know your airmen, getting to know the person next to you so you can recognize those abnormal situations. You may look at me and say, oh, he's a chief, he's got it all together, but I tell you, I have my issues as well. And I need a good wingman like Colonel Kramer, Colonel Burton, you know? Some chiefs out there are my good wingman as well. So I challenge you to get yourself a good wingman, just somebody to talk to about whatever situation you might find yourself into, and that'll help us with those situations. Next topic I'd like to cover is uh, PME. There's a big transformation in the world of PME that's going on right now. Two words, you know, well, three words, just get it done. That's what you have to remember. Serious ramifications for not getting your PME done. If you don't get it done on time, guess what? You cannot re-enlist, you're ineligible for promotion. When I made Master Sergeant, I had some good mentors, some good wingmen, if you will, who grabbed me and said, hey, you need to get over to the, uh, the education office, sign up for the course 14, get it done. And that's exactly what I did. I only did it because I thought, hey, they told me to do it, and that's what I did. But I wouldn't be here today if I didn't have those good wingmen to help me do that. So again, bottom line, just get the PME done. And the last thing I want to leave you with, uh, or touch if you will, is uh, CCF degrees. 55% of active duty tech sergeants have a CCF degree. So if you're a tech sergeant out there and you don't have it, you're behind the power curve. And also, not having your CCF degree eliminates you from a lot of opportunities. Again, I would not be standing here today if I didn't have a CCF degree early in my career. And it took good wingmen pushing me to my limits to help me get to where I am today. And all of you should have a wingman. If you don't have one, I guarantee you Colonel Burton will be your wingman. That's all I have for you today. Thank you. Colonel Burton's everybody's wingman. Now, this is an important topic. Uh, and I'm glad, I'm glad Chief asked Chief to talk about the importance of getting the word out on PME and education. We as a service, the Air Force, value education, I would say, personal opinion, more so even than any of the other services. We certainly drive that. It's woven into now our AFIs, our instructions, all our promotion guidance. We really place a high value on continued education. That's why we have such high standards getting into the service in the first place. That's why we continue to push that for advancement to the next levels, why we are the most highly educated and trained force in the Department of Defense, certainly. Now, if we're going to put that expectation, yeah, I think that's good. That's good. We should be proud. But if we're going to, as a service, we're going to push that and advance that and have that expectation for you to do that. We also need to give you opportunity and to help you do that. Part of that is being good wingmen, being good mentors to help guide in a buddy system, you know, to come up with programs. We talk about all the weight loss programs, stop smoking programs, fitness programs. It's always easier to do that with a buddy, you know, because it's the motivation piece. You know, who can lose the most weight? Who can get their mile and a half time down more? Who can do more push-ups? That kind of stuff to kind of challenge each other. Same thing with PME in your degrees, hey, I'm almost done with this, this test, I'm almost done, you know, this, this chapter or that, or I've got this section done. 
Uh, it's a good way to partner up and to, to challenge each other, be good wingmen in that regard. But as a service, we need to make sure that we're offering you the great opportunities. Tuition assistance is one of those ways we can help you. It's a great program that the Air Force really uh, is, leads the other services as well in this regard, too. There have been some changes, though, and the fiscal realities have made a little bit of where we had to be more prudent in how we spend dollars. Not taking away benefits, but we're trying to be a little more prudent in how we become more efficient so we don't have to. And so I asked the education office folks to come give you a quick briefing on some of the changes because some of them are very important, particularly with timelines for applying for tuition assistance, so that if we're going to ask you and encourage you to do this, you know, we want to help provide you the tools and the programs to make it happen for you. So with that, without any further ado. Good morning. How are you doing? As Colonel Kramer mentioned, the number one thing that effectively happened on 1 October is we didn't lose anything. So we have tightened up the money. Uh, a little bit more restrictive, but the bottom line, your $250 per semester hour and your $4,500 are still there. You will still be able to accumulate about seventy-five dollars to $100,000 over a basic associate, bachelor's, and graduate degree. So that's a great opportunity and a great piece of news. One of the things that uh, he mentioned, this is issues that are associated with submission of the TA. That's a showstopper. Uh, they've changed the guidelines so that you must submit a TA uh, no longer, no earlier than seven days or later than seven days before a term starts. So you really want to make sure that you're planning your TA assistance. One of the things that's also going to be involved with that, because Kinsey's new, we're going to give a one-on-one -on -one or at least a personalized briefing for those individuals who have been out of the TA game for over 12 months. That way you catch up on all the latest rules and you have a better opportunity to understand what you need to do to make sure that this is done effectively. Uh, some of you have plans in the system that were uh, prior to October 2013. Those plans may have not been evaluated. Uh, you have until um, 14 October to have an evaluated plan in the system. Those who didn't have it will continue to uh, proceed, but those who are getting new plans need to have a new evaluated degree plan in the system. Next slide. Graduate and undergraduate caps are being monitored now. So as you proceed towards your bachelor's or graduate degree, you will have a particular cap, and that will be based upon the credits associated with that uh, program. So it's imperative that you have all your transcripts evaluated. Many people don't realize that the CCF transcripts can cover all electives. So you walk into a door where you're able to complete your degree quicker and that all credits transfer into that program, and that'll help tighten up that dollar. 124 for undergrad, 42 for graduate. If you have a program, like I say, that is already in the system, that cap will be carried forward to the completion of your current degree. If you change the degree program, then you will be under the new caps. The grade level has become a little bit more restrictive also. Undergraduates, a reimbursable grade is a D or lower. A graduate, it's going to be a B or lower. Well, the B is the lowest. A C would cause you to be reimbursed at the graduate level. So again, it's prior planning will help you get to that process where you don't get caught up in those situations. If you have a grade that's outstanding, an, an I, a W, that process can be completed by you through a CMS through your finance, if that's what you choose. Always go to your school because there may be some mitigating circumstances that the school will help you out with. But in those cases that you have to uh, reimburse, you will not be able to get TA until that reimbursement action has taken place. Prerequisites is a big thing. A lot of our folks, especially in the medical field, are looking at programs that require prerequisites. The prerequisites have to be included in your academic plan. So when you're looking out there trying to nurses education commission, one of the other commissioning programs, physician assistance, please ensure that the degree plan that you're trying to strive for includes the required prerequisite courses. Next slide. The legacy certification program that was probably many of you remember, effective one October that is now being replaced by the COOL program. It's a credentialing program directly associated with your military control AFSC. Those folks who were fortunate enough to get a certificate prior to that, you're going to start to clock over. So $4,500 will still be available for you to get a actual credential by industry in your particular control AFSC. AFEC has those 
data. It has the opening of the credentialing page, and it will allow you to start researching what credentials you may be wanting to utilize as you move forward. Enlisted airmen are obviously the focus of this particular program. Uh, if anybody has any questions within the uh, officer's rank, please come and see us. We can talk to you a little bit more about that. And remember that if you are enrolled in a current certificate, you will have until 1 October 2015 to complete that program. One thing I want to leave you with, this is a new way of doing business. We're here for you. Uh, we got online, we got walk-in, we got telephone, 24 hours a day. Please let us know what your concerns are, and we're going to help you navigate through these changes. Thank you. Any questions? Appreciate it. So that's really important, and it's good. Thank you very much for presenting that, because the key takeaway, one of those that we've, has manifested itself recently is the fact that you have to apply a week before your class, you know, the seven days prior. You can't wait to that last minute and get, it, and get the application in, in order to get reimbursed. So you have to plan ahead. That's a key element of it. On that. So if you do have any questions, please get with the education office. They're phenomenal. They've got some, they have great customer service back there. We talk about, you know, it's one of my priorities. They give great customer service back there. They've got a whole range of programs for a little bit of something for everybody back there. So if, if something you're interested in or have any questions, please let them know. Now, and they, are, they exemplify a lot of what FSS really is doing. FSS is, you know, by definition of the name of their squadron, the Force Support Squadron, they support all of us, everybody on this base, uh, much like what we do as a wing in enabling rapid global mobility, right, or enabling what everybody does on this base. They've real, I want to give a shout out to FSS because they've really done a phenomenal job of uh, taking care of everybody through these kind of programs, helping get through the force shaping issues and addressing those. I know we're still working our way through some of that, but uh, getting that information out, answering those questions, processing all the paperwork, dealing with the TAP programs uh, to help transition people and everything, doing phenomenal work there. But also on the ongoing, in terms of supporting us on a day-to-day -day basis, as far as recreational activities and opportunities, the golf course and bringing it back from what it was with the floods last year to where we are now, Phenomenal recovery. The cafe is going great out there for food. And out at the, at the Scott Club, which you formerly know as, uh, as uh, the enlisted club side, where we also had Breadworks was the place where you could go get your lunch, right, uh, over there at the club, and you'd eat in the ballroom. Well, you know what we did uh, through a services transfer transformation funds that we were able to acquire from uh, the personnel center the FSS team in conjunction with contracting and CE uh, has really put together a lot of great changes, tra truly transformed the club, if you haven't been over there back in what was the enlisted lounge, to a new uh, facility. This is what it looked like before. We have kind of the, the, all the beer signs. We had that big old honking, you know, 1980s rear projection television uh, that you could use for a weightlifting program or something, I guess, as big. Uh, so that was what it was before to what it looks like now. Uh, major transformation. It's not quite a spacecraft and, and alien-like as it may appear in, the, in, the, in that particular photo, but it's to illustrate in that, that same space in the top right is that one on the left. They still have all the white lights and everything in there, but what's cool is they've got, they can change the mood. So when you have functions in there, they can change the colors. There's all kinds of neat stuff. On the long, same thing on the bar, all that changes. They've got the new simulated, the, the, well, fake hardwood floors that's more resilient as opposed to the carpet so it doesn't stain. It is phenomenal. They've done a really great job of, of redoing that. And if you'll see in the back there, all those TVs, there are three 80-inch televisions, there's four 60-inch TVs, and there's going to be three or 50-inch televisions in there. So when we do football on Sundays, that's the place to go watch it on Sundays, is to go see. And we were, back, we were just there this weekend, and there's a lot of good games. Um, not so good for my team, but it was, but it was, a, it was a great place to be. And with the, the changes that are coming in Dominion, I'm going to show that in a second. But this, we had uh, Chief, uh, the uh, Mayfield uh, Merriweather fight, uh, Merriweather fight, uh, Mangdana Merriweather fight, sorry, yeah, uh, Mer Mer uh, Merriweather fight, uh, had that pay per view on there. So we're looking for these kind of events, great place to go hold functions over there. But for everybody's sake, even if you're not coming to that, We've got a new menu in a new restaurant called Zeppelin's. 
Zeppelins harkens back to the heritage of this base, back into the 20s when we we're lighter than air station, the big dirigibles, the blimps, so to speak, if people think of them. Um, these are just a few of the items that, uh, that are on the menu. Uh, we actually have, Doc, we have ah! vegan and gluten-free actually on the menu as well. Yeah, there's some more, uh, a wide variety of selections on there. These are just a handful of the, the things that, are, that uh, the staff pulled off. It's, if you think about going to some place like McAllister's, you go walk up to the counter, you order, you get your drink, you get your number, you go sit down, they bring your food out to the table, they do refills for you, that's what's happening at Zeppelin's. Um, there's going to be a very diverse menu, something, you take the office there or want to go out for lunch, everybody can find something. Everybody can find something. You could eat there several days during the week and not have to eat the same thing over and over again and find something that you like. I think you'll really appreciate it. We've got uh, the grand opening is going to be on the 22nd is what we're targeting right now. The only thing holding us up at this point, you saw the pictures of the facility. The only thing holding us up is in the back shop in the con computer connection stay for waiting on some stuff coming in because it's truly transformed. Mr. Crawford, the new club manager, has a great background working with the Chili's Corporation. Uh, and has really transformed the way the kitchen operations work, so it's fast service. You know, when they order there, it goes back, there's three stations, someone's making salads, someone's doing sides, someone's on the grill, you know, so you'll get some fast service uh, bringing out to your table as well. So we're just waiting on, on that piece to get uh, uh, finalized so we can open up full-blown uh, for everybody. But what we want to do and try and get the word out and to, and to give opportunities for you to, to find out what it's going to be like and to spread the word, we're having a, a tasting. So if you look underneath your seats, there's a handful of the seats that have a ticket sort of, uh, taped underneath there. It should be readily available. There's not enough room for everybody, but it's an orange. All right, some of the people have one. All right. So here's what's going to go on. So tomorrow at noon, we're having a tasting. The club is going to have, they're going to make a whole smattering of a whole bunch of stuff that they have on the new menu to try it out. It gives the opportunity for the kitchen staff to practice making it. It gives an opportunity for you to provide feedback on it. So if you have a ticket and you cannot personally make it tomorrow at noon, please give it to somebody else who can. Just bring that, uh, that ticket to let you in. We have limited seating based on the numbers because we've given some out at some of the other organizations on the base as well. Uh, to try and give some exposure and get some broad feedback on, on it. But I think you're really going to like this. Uh, it's it's kind of like bringing in a chain restaurant or a franchise into the base, but it is our own. This logo uh, that uh, was designed locally, this, the menu was came up with locally. Everything is right here at Scott. So kudos to FSS uh, for making that happen. And I also want to throw a shout out. Yep. No, that's good. I want to give a shout out to the, uh, the Light, CE Opsolite guys, most of them are in the, the audience this morning, but uh, in order to get the football season kicked off right and also to have a lot of things done before the gala, uh, Air Force Gala kicked off, they really came in and did a lot of uh, special extra work on a weekend and in late hours to make sure we could open on time uh, to get the, use the facility and, and keep things going. So I want to give a shout out to them, so thank you very much for that. <laughs> Okay, all right, so um, uh, like I said, great job by FSS. This is just another example of you know, what's going on, all the different squadrons out there. You guys are hitting on all cylinders, whether it's ops, whether it's medical, whether it's supports, comm, uh, wing staff, everybody uh, is doing, doing great work out there. I'm very proud of you. Uh, in, in order to set up kind of where I want to go with as we start talking about some things coming forward in the Wingman Day, I got a little video that I'll probably kind of tee up for my, for my next. When you're running with these animals, the one thing you can never do is show fear. If you lose respect for the squirrels, you will have problems during the running. You have to be faster and quicker than the square ones. You have to have very good reflex. You get confused because of the, of the size, I think. They are small, I can manage them. No, that's not true, you can't. He played with his friends, corriendo dentro de las ardillas. To beat the squirrel, you must think like a squirrel. As long as I have legs, 
I will run with the squares. All right, this was a uh, this was a Super Bowl commercial from back in uh, 2001, actually. Uh, EDS Corporation. You've seen the I showed you the uh, building the airplane as you fly. Kind of that's another one of theirs, uh, one of their commercials. All right. Uh, okay, so why the squirrels? Well, one, I thought my inspiration for this one, quite honestly, was my neighborhood because I are being overrun by squirrels right now, and I feel like that going home. Oh my gosh! I don't know if you guys have seen this. You live on base or if it's off base as well. Uh, you know, it's like a gauntlet out there. Um, you know, last year around colonial housing, we had uh, a fox problem. And you know, we had a fair number of foxes running around there. And, you know, remember Colonel Price, you know, what does a fox say? You know, that stuff. Well, yeah. well, we, well, they took care of the fox problem, and now what we got? Squirrel problem, right? So there's a lesson learned out of that one, too. All right? Is when you solve one, another one pops up. Right, it's unintended consequences. You think about that. It's uh, as far as what what happens there. So, so there's a little lesson in that in of itself. But uh, you know, those squirrels are a little troublesome. By the way, they are decimating our pumpkins. I don't know if you guys have, there's some there's some fat squirrels out there right now. Uh, we were having at the you know we were uh, talking about this over the fire pit the other night actually about how I was saying how we need to get like the Duck Dynasty guys to come take care of some of the. You know the squirrel problem we have here, and and with all the pumpkins, there we be like spump, pumpkin spiced for October squirrel, uh, kind of thing. Uh, anyway, but the point is, yeah, I won't tell you who said that, but uh, but he, but he has a really good sense of humor sitting in the front row next to my wife. Uh, uh, Anyway, uh, so, so, okay, so one of the things there is, okay, the, the difference, you know, one problem pops up, you know, you get another one. This squirrels from the, the motivation for me to find this. But the other one really is about the lesson from the commercial is, you know, you think about that when you start watching it. Those are familiar with uh, kind of the annual tradition over in Spain, the running of the bulls up in Pamplona, it's Parafería. It's in July. Uh, it's, a, it's a big thing, and people from all over fly in to go do that. Uh, but in this case, you know, we think of the bull, you know, they, they talk about the lumbering one. It's not, that's not who you need to watch out for out there. It's, it's dealing with all the little, the more nimble, the squirrels out there. So what I like to relate this to is with the IG system. And we've got this big mobility exercise coming up here in November. All right? So if we think about, you know, we're going to go into this and we're running. The bowl is like, can we get the people processed? Can we get the cargo processed? Can we get it to where it needs to be? Those are the big things that kind of go along. You know, they're... They have that momentum, it's, it's coming through. Can we do that? Absolutely. I have total confidence that we can do that. Uh, I know you have total confidence that we can do that. It's not that it isn't hard, but we can do that. The challenge is the mob folders, all the other communication, the checklists, the, uh, all the, the uh, documentation, all of that stuff, right? Those are the squirrels. Those are the little things. They're all over, and they keep changing. It's in the IG system that we have right now, which you know that I love because we have control over it. It's commander's program. We inspect ourselves. But it is hard in the sense that we have all these McT checklists that keep changing, and we have all of these functional requirements that come from multiple AFIs that keep changing, and you have, they're all over, they're, they are agile. They are the squirrels. They're all over, they're running, and trying to keep up with them is, is a real challenge. That's the hard part, is uh, looking out for all of that. That's where we need to kind of focus on and think about our processes, think about our communication. Uh, so sometimes the big threat, and we get the bull, right, is, uh, is the, the object, you gotta watch out for that, but it's the real challenge for us, particularly in a high performing wing like this one, is to watch out for the squirrels and, uh, and to keep watching out for them. And they keep popping up everywhere. So, uh, so as we get ready coming forth here in November, we've got that mobility exercise. It's also going to be our mid-tour or our mid-term inspection, so to speak, the over-the-shoulder where the AMC IG is going to be watching us, you know, they, how we grade ourselves. This is our first event uh, of that nature. I mean, they always can peek in and see how we're doing, but this is just... How are you guys doing assessing yourselves based on something you're already doing? So we're doing the mobility exercise. They're just going to watch us do that. It is what it is. I have total confidence in you guys. I have total confidence in the team. We're going to knock it out of the park. And like I said, don't let that 
I have told you previously, don't let the fact that we're going to have this assessment or, you know, kind of over, change anything that we're doing. Nothing should change. If you find something that's, that needs to be written up, write it up. You know, that's, th that's what we need to do, continue process improvement. You need to find the, the checklist items, whatever, all that stuff, write it up. We're, it's all about making ourselves better so that we can deal with the squirrels and the bulls out there. And it's all grounded in the core values, that integrity piece, which is the focus of Wingman Day. The focus of our Wingman Day today is uh, ground, you know, talk, re, you know, re-bluing ourselves, sort of, so to speak, in the core values, the Air Force core values, and talking about a culture of dignity and respect. There are a number of you know, small groups. You guys have been through some of those today because you're in the second session of this. The other group came and talked here first, so you've seen some of that. Um, you know, integrity is really the, uh, the foundation of everything that we do. Of everything we do in the Air Force, it is the, that is what binds us all together, that you know you can trust the person next to you, that you can trust your boss, you can trust the system, because we all have integrity. We're ingrained, it's ingrained in, from us, in us from day one, whether it's in boot camp, BMT, or officer training school, or ROTC, and on through tech school, every training, it's woven to all the syllabus, you know, integrity, service, and excellence. Integrity is the foundation of all that. Service is our common purpose. It's what we all signed up to do. To support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Right? We all took that oath. We all did it. Actually, the majority of you did it during a time of war, actually. We were already in a time of war which is a, a calling in of itself. But we have a common purpose of service. Service to the nation, service before self, as it says, but also service, as I've told you before, is it's really service to each other, service to our customers, service to our partners on the base. Uh, it's service to others. That's our common purpose. And excellence is our commitment in how we're going to do that. We do it, we want to do it right. That's why we are AMC's showcase wing. Because we pride ourselves in our excellence and how we do it, that others want to be like us because we do it right. And, uh, and so that's what you, hopefully you had some good discussions on the scenarios today when you did the small groups. Um, that's what Wingman Day is really about today, is to, to re-blue ourselves in those core values. This week in particular, it, it just coincided, you know, that the, how many people know who really was the uh, grandfather or father of the core values in the Air Force, who really brought those and in, in put them into our official doctrine. General Fogelman, General Ron, Ronald Fogelman, former Chief of Staff of the Air Force, former AMC and Transcom Commander. Okay? General Fogelman is the one that codified those core values, integrity, service, and excellence for us, and gave us a true vision, uh, to a code, that we all have a common bond. The philosophy we've kind of had, but he codified it. General Fogelman is going to be honored this week here at Scott. He will be here on Thursday. The Airlift Tanker Association is dedicating a bust on the um, Heritage Walk of Fame out there. He was their uh, honoree last year, and so the bust will be dedicated on Thursday. There'll be a big ceremony. Everybody's invited to come out to participate in that and uh, to observe. It's, I think, 10 o'clock on Thursday. Um, it's just right out there in front of the wing headquarters there at the Heritage Hall. But General Fogelman will be here along with, as General McDew pointed out, General Ryan, General Cassidy, General Johns, General Robertson, uh, General Light, uh, and you know, a whole host of, uh, General, I mentioned General Cassidy also. So all the former four stars are going to be here and, and General Fogelman will be here as well. So that's really neat that he's going to be here. He's the father of, of those core values. So hopefully you got some good discussion on that. We continue to think through, through all this. And underneath, and how that all connects, is helping to promote a culture of dignity and respect. Those core values are what bind us together. And when we adhere to those, then you can actually, you can have that respect for one another because we have that common bond. You know where they come from. And even though what everybody's from, if I pulled the audience in here, where everybody's from. We would cover the majority of the states. We would cover locations outside the United States. Uh, we would, if you had different upbringings of family situations, ethnicities, race, et cetera, we have a tremendously diverse population here in our wing, and that's what makes us so strong. 
We have diverse backgrounds in education, in opinions, upbringing, philosophy, all that kind of stuff. We bring unique perspectives on that. So not everybody's going to agree, and that's okay. Because when you have some healthy debate on stuff, it helps us come up and you know, get better about things. But you've got to respect one another for that. that. Those core values enable you to do that. So as a Chicago Bears fan, yeah, I can not like the Packers, but I can respect the fact that they outplayed them on Sunday, even though I don't like it. Right? But I still respect them for, for the ability for that. Yes, Aaron Rodgers did have a good game, and Jay Cutler not as much. But it's all about the respect. And it's the same thing in your workplace. Okay, it's the same thing in our work center, same thing in our home. You can disagree, you can have different, you can have friendly rivalries, but we respect one another. And when we do that, when we have that respect for one another, when we have that common bond, we adhere to those core values, it makes a place that you want to be. That uh, uh, you want to work, it makes us a more effective organization. And today's Wingman Day, you get a chance to go through, you're kind of on the tail end now of the formal part of the program. My guidance to all the commanders for today, and to Mr. Jones who helped coordinate all of this for us, thank you Frank for, for doing that as our community support coordinator, was we'll go through the material, we'll talk about all the lessons, we'll have the group stuff in the, in the morning or, or what half of the day whenever we can fit that in with the organization. But the other half of the day is dedicated to the camaraderie, the team building, the resiliency piece, and the social side to getting to know each other. Because in order to have respect for one another and to be able to do all this, you need to know each other, right? And you need to have some fun. And when you can build those bonds, then it makes it a much better, again, a much better workplace to be in. You understand each other a little more. You, again, you may not always agree, but you understand and you build those ties and it makes us much more effective. It makes us much more of a family and working together. Uh, you know, everybody has the crazy uncle or the brother or sister, you know, but you're still a family, right? You still take care of each other. That's us. That's the 375th. And that's the goal today. So hopefully this afternoon, for those of you who finished the program today, the guidance was, I don't care what you do as a group activity, but it has to be a group activity, and you have to do it together. Whether you're going to lunch, in a movie, you're going bowling, golfing, laser tag, whatever it is. And I know there's a diverse uh, you know, selection of activities going on today. I didn't care what it was so long as you did it together and you get a chance to know each other. Please find those particular, you got the new ones here, the new, the FTAC airmen who are coming in, the, the dorm residents. You know, don't let yourself get holed up in there. Meet people. Uh, this is your opportunity to do that. Don't talk about work unless you're, you know, having fun and it's for fun purposes. You know, this is about getting to know each other. Talk about sports, talk about kids, talk about family, talk about movies, talk about video games, talk about whatever you want to talk about. Uh, but just get to know each other and have some fun. It's all about the camaraderie and uh, the social, because that is equally important. So I thank you for what all you do. Um, again, today, uh, you've been through a lot of the program. I ask you to internalize that uh, and re-blue yourself and be thinking as we go forward, uh, you know, how this stuff really means. Translate some of that when you're supervisors, working with, with your teams out there to identify those opportunities, the, the, the core values, the, the culture of dignity and respect, the family atmosphere, the get to know each other, the teamwork, the family feel kind of thing. Infuse that into what you do every day. Because that's what makes us a special organization. That's what makes us a top performing organization. That's what makes us AMC Showcase Wing. 375? Showcase, Showcase Pride. Thanks. Carry on.